My name is Melinda Rogers, aka Scrap Metal Sheila, and I've been asked often to do some instructional videos of how to make different things with barbed wire and wire, and so this is my first video. I hope you enjoy it. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a barbed wire ball. And this is a very simple project. It's one of the first things that I ever did. And I think that if you master the art of making a barbed wire ball, then you are really set to go on and make a lot of other things with barbed wire. And of course, it always looks absolutely great. You will need barbed wire, probably up to 100 metres or even 200 metres, depending on the size of the ball that you're going to make. The gloves that I use are these engineering gloves. I don't use leather gloves because leather catches in the barbed wire much more than these. And these just let your fingers be a little bit more agile. I also use a bolt cutter to cut the wire. It saves a lot of effort. If you try and cut barbed wire with pliers, you've got to use a lot more effort and you'll get rather tired by the end of the day. A pair of plier, cutting pliers to cut the tie wire that we will use to tie the barbed wire together at the start. The first thing you're going to need for the barbed wire ball is five equal pieces of barbed wire. So all you have to do is decide what size your ball that you want and then cut five pieces of barbed wire that will represent the size ball that you want. So I don't know the size for every ball, you'll just have to work it out yourself. But this ball that I'm making, has a diameter of 45 centimetres. So I actually needed to cut five 1.8 metre lengths to make a, a sphere that has a diameter of 45 centimetres. So once you've cut those five pieces of barbed wire out, come back to the video and I'll tell you what you need to do next. I think you've probably turned the video off and cut your five pieces. And so while you've been doing that, I have started to form my pieces into, into circles. Now, so this is how you do that. What I like to do, or when I was beginning, I actually drew a circle on the cement or on my table with chalk. You'll see that I actually do have a circle here that I've drawn. And all you do is you get your barbed wire and you form it into a circle and you line it up with that circle that you've drawn. So I've got that lined up there in my 45 centimetre diameter circle. See how I've got these end bits here? All you need to do is Twist that end around, nothing too hard, just a couple of twists and you'll have a circle. Now you can see that that's a little bit odd shaped, so if you've drawn your circle on your desk or on the cement, just line that barbed wire up with it and just give it a little bit of a push here and there and bend it into shape. So you can see that I've got a very circular shape there. Don't be too precious because once you start winding the barbed wire on later, it really won't make a lot of difference if you're a centimetre out. When, you've, when you have your five circles all done to your satisfaction, it's time for the next step. Now, before I started filming this video, I cut lots of little pieces of copper wire into short three inch pieces so that I could use them to tie the base circles together at the start. We really won't need these once we start rolling the barbed wire onto the ball, but at the
the moment it's great to have a little bit of tie wire. It could be copper wire, it can be um, tie wire from the shop. I like using copper wire because it's, it goes brown and it blends in with rusty barbed wire and it looks great at the end. So the first thing that you have to do is to get two of your circles and all you do is you line them up like this. So you just find approximately halfway on both of your circles and you put them together like this and use your tie wire to tie those at the top and at the bottom. Try to make sure it's quite firm Otherwise, you might have a little bit of trouble later if they come loose. Listen to the birds in that video. Isn't it wonderful living in Australia? I hope you all can hear those beautiful birds singing in the background like I can. Now when you've got your two pieces together, they almost look a little bit like a beach ball, the next piece is a little bit different. You don't put it, you don't line it up with the top and the bottom cross. So what you actually want at the bottom and at the top is a, you want a triangle. So you don't want them lined up like a beach ball now. What you need to do is line them up. You can, if you can see there, there's a triangle. It's not lined up correctly. And at the bottom, same thing. What this does is stop that ball once you've tied it up, it won't be wobbly. So if you don't have the triangle, you'll find that all your pieces will wobble around. But if you've got that triangle there at the top and the bottom, it just lends a lot of security and stability to the ball. And if you've ever studied engineering, you'll know that the triangle is one of the most stable shapes there is to build with. And I guess that's why it works well on this project. So then once you've got those triangles lined up, all you do is you get your, your tie wire and you tie it together at the top and at the bottom. So I've got my bottom triangle I've got and now I'm about to tie the top triangle I just really want to stress that when you put that third circle in that you have your triangle at the top and at the bottom because if you don't that circle will be wobbly and floppy and as you can see this one is quite solid it doesn't flop and do anything it's quite stiff so once you've got your three rings together you've got two more you don't put them on the same now. You, you, these are going to go on as a diagonal. So you literally just 
Put them on on a diagonal across your circle. One goes this way and then the other one goes the opposite way. So can you see that? You've got two going the opposite way to each other across the ball. You don't keep putting them on like a beach ball. So this just gives you a firm base to start rolling the barbed wire on later and, and, and forming up your ball, which is gonna look really wonderful in your garden or even inside the house, inside of, people use them for all sorts of things. Lamp holders, chandeliers, it's up to you, but they always look great. Doing this first is just gonna make it so much easier for you to make a barbed wire ball. Uh, when I first started, I didn't realize, I just tried to roll it straight up into a ball and it, it is extremely hard to do that. And so over the years, I just learned that this was the easiest way to make a ball, not too much effort and a great result in the end. So all I'm doing now is tying on the barbed wire at all the different joins for the two new rings that I have just put on this ball. If anyone's wondering, this apron that I've got on is a farrier's apron and I've found that it's just perfect for protecting your good jeans against barbed wire and it's also quite comfortable. So just keep checking and when you've found that you have tied all of your joins together, you'll be ready to put the finishing length of barbed wire onto your ball and you'll be all done. When I do my workshops, lots of ladies always, they just can't believe how easy it is and how great these balls look in the end. I've tied my five rings together now. I hope that you can remember what, how I told you to make it, but if not, just rewind the video and go back to the part that you need. You'll, be, you'll end up with a very flimsy ball, but it's going to be strong enough to roll your barbed wire onto it. I already have wound some barbed wire out into long rows ready to put on this ball so we'll do that right now. So here I am with the ball that we just made. It's a flimsy ball at the moment but we're ready to put the barbed wire onto this ball and I'll just pick up this piece of barbed wire. So I've got a, a length here of barbed wire that I unrolled earlier. This is very easy. To join this into your ball, you don't need to use any tie wire. All you need to do is poke that wire in there, straight in, and then just give it a bit of a twist around a, a piece, any piece will do. And all you need to do is start rolling this on. Now, make sure that when you roll it on, 
you actually roll it, you do it over. When I first started, I thought it'll be a lot easier just to put this on the ground and roll it up. But that never ever worked for me. If you can make it work, go ahead. But the only way that I have found to keep this barbed wire nice and firm on the frame is to do it over roll. So roll it over hand. All you need to do is roll this wire onto that ball frame that you made and you just keep on picking a gap in the ball. So as you go, just keep moving the ball to where you see a gap. Don't just go round, 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 round like in the same spot like a beach ball. So you can see here, there's a gap, there's a big gap here. So I'm going to make that wire go across the gap. That way I've halved that gap. I'm just going to keep on picking gaps and rolling this wire over the gaps. And eventually all those gaps will be filled up and we'll have a nice ball. There's another really big gap right there. All I'm doing, just rolling this, I'm keeping that nice and firm, rolling it over, picking the gaps, until I get to the end of my wire. Now when you get to the end, you may be happy. You might be happy with the ball that you've got. Or you might want to add some more, some more wire on. I've seen people keep adding wire until it's almost solid. It's almost too hard to, to um, see through it. And then other people are quite happy with a more see-through and delicate ball like that. I'm actually going to put, I'm going to continue putting wire on this so that you can see the difference. So when you come to the end of a, of a piece of wire, don't panic. All you need to do is put a little bit of a bend over there and that won't come apart. So I'm just going to grab another end now that I've already previously unwound and I'll show you how to join that in again. So here's another piece that I already had unwound and untangled because as you know if you get old secondhand barbed wire it's not really going to be very easy to unwind. It'll be tangled and it'll be a real job to unwind that. So same thing just to, to join this wire in all I'm doing is hooking it in. See it, it won't come out. You don't even need to bend it. You just hook it in there and you start rolling that again. And continue turning that ball around and finding the gaps and rolling it over. I 
but I, I suppose you would call this an, an inwards direction. Roll it towards you and not away from you. If you roll it away from you, you'll end up with a lot of loose wire at the end and it, it'll be quite hard to get that ball to sit right for you. Just got to the end of my wire and to, to make sure that that doesn't unravel, I'm just bending that in, hooking it around another piece. You don't need tie wire. And then that will just stay there. So you can see I've now got the ball is getting a little bit more solid each time. I'm just going to get the last two pieces and roll them on and then we'll see what it looks like at the end. Same thing again. Same, the exact same thing again. Just poke this into the the ball and then the barbs will keep it in place. You don't even have to wind it on. And then start winding that barb wire on again. The ball will be going on an inwards direction towards you. I'll be posting this video on my website for people. It'll be free for anyone who wants to try to make a barbed wire ball. And I really hope that you get a real kick out of making your own ball. So this is my last piece. I've probably used around about 70 metres on this ball right now at the moment and I'm not going to put any more on it after this. This will be enough. Same again, I just did the same thing. Poke that barbed wire into the ball and when you pull it firm, it won't come out. When you're making these barbed wire balls, it doesn't have to be old wire. You can use silver, you can use new barbed wire, you can use a little a mixture of both if you like. Um, I always find that it doesn't really matter what type of barbed wire you use, they look great.
I don't know if you can notice this, but this old barbed wire has got old pieces of plain wire and tie wire still connected. I usually don't bother to take those off. Some people like to take them off. I think they add a little bit of character to your barbed wire ball and oftentimes you can even use that as a hook if you want to hang your ball up somewhere. Um, it's up to you, it's personal choice whether you want to remove those. I think they look good, but that's what art's about, doing what you love. So this is the end of my barbed wire ball. I've got my end piece right here. I'm going to, all I'm going to do is make a, an edge, a hook, and I'm going to hook it inside there. and poke my hand in and bend that back around another piece so that it doesn't come undone. And then you've got your ball. Now I'm going to just show you a couple of little things um, that you can do with these balls once you've finished. If you're a real perfectionist or if you want to change the shape, so we'll do that now. Now, if I had wanted, I could have rolled out another 100, 200 metres of wire and kept rolling on this ball. It would have been a lot heavier and it would have been less see-through. Or I could have stopped at the first piece and had a more transparent ball, but I, this is what I wanted. So when you get your ball to this stage, you might actually decide that there's a loose piece on it that you don't like. So I deliberately left some pieces. I hope, I wonder if you can see that there are some looser pieces. You can see that piece there, I'm trying to get it in a position that you can see it. It's loose. So what you do is you find your loose pieces. You get a pair of bolt cutters or a pair of pliers, doesn't really matter. And you simply get that loose piece of wire and you twist those, twist your, twist your arm cutters See what I've done? Twist those cutters around and it, it will tighten the wire up on itself. And it also gives it a nice effect because you've got some little C-shaped patterns in your ball. So you can see that C-shaped pattern there. And there's another one. And really, it's up to you what you do with your ball once you've finished. They look great on top of an old post. They look great on rocks. They look great just in a garden. They, you can hang them and you can wrap lights around, solar lights on them. You can make a hook so that you can hang them in a tree or hang them from the ceiling of your house. They look great as lamp shade or light shades. They really have a lot of uses. I really hope that you enjoyed this Video. It's the first video I've made and I'm planning on making many more. 
I'm going to let people see this video and, and use it for free and it will be on my website www.scrapmetalsheila.com.au and you can probably access it on YouTube as well. Anyhow, that's it for me. I hope you really enjoyed this.